dictated those moves. So just wanted to make sure I was available to all of you to, uh, to answer any questions that you may have on those moves and, and, uh, and any other topics you want to cover. With that, Ethan, go ahead. I'm happy to, to answer questions. Our first question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Brody. Uh, my question actually didn't have to do with the moves. I, I was just curious if you've gotten any more clarity on Jed Lowry and his second opinion. Yeah, Jed, Jed had his second opinion yesterday, uh, and the the report back was was not uh, not really that inconsistent to what we've what we've already learned. And you know the 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 description that I have or was been, it was told is that it's a it's PCL laxity. So that uh, you know that's the injury that's been in the knee, but he's got laxity in that PCL that's been causing him the pain. And when he wears his his larger brace, that pain is mitigated, and when he, uh, when he takes that brace off or plays in the smaller brace, and that pain increases. So it's uh, PCL laxity. The two doctors are kind of going to put their heads together along with the player and uh, determine the best course of action here as we go forward. Is there a surgical option for that, or is rest and rehab still the primary thing you're looking at? Too, too early to tell, and I think that's going to be a conversation that the two doctors will, will have to explore and uh, – you know, communicate with each other in terms of what they see is best. And just, just to follow up one more time on him, do you have any clarity of, you know, when he might be able to contribute for you? Obviously, you've had some 40-man moves. You've resisted putting him on the 45-day DL as of yet, which would indicate that you think he could come back and help you at the tennis year. Is your expectation still that he can help you? We think the player can help us, you know, and, and we saw it in summer camp that offensively he can, uh, he can be a, a value add to the team. So the, the goal would be to get him back to contribute, but um, you know the conversations that come from the doctors here over the course of the next uh, next couple of days will determine what the timeline is based on the uh, the course of action. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. Next question is from Tim Healy. Hi, Brody. A uh, couple questions on the Maxwell signing. What made you feel that you guys needed another catcher, and why Maxwell specifically? Well, what we're what we're seeing right now around the game is that you know having depth in the in the player pool is is really important, and we have learned that firsthand just even over the course of the last couple of days of having you know major league caliber players ready to come up and contribute on a moment's notice when unexpected happens. Uh, so the catching position obviously is a valuable one, and and one that you know when we were looking at the available options out there, Bruce is a guy that we we have had interest in and have tracked in the past. And we think that from a from a power standpoint, we think that he uh, he provides us some good good insurance from Wilson Ramos' standpoint. And if he can progress quickly, we think he can help us. Um, you know, he's going to have to to start up a little bit later than the other guys, given that he wasn't in summer camp. But you know, our optimism is is that he can get himself get himself going and be a, be a viable option for us as we go forward. And how does he rate defensively? So you know, I think he's always been perceived and at least from our perception as well an offensive first catcher but he's worked on his uh, his mobility we actually sent one of our top scouts Eddie Bain out to evaluate him in a workout last week about 10 days ago and he was impressed with where he was defensively relative to the last time we saw him so we're uh, we're hopeful that with continued work there that he'll be he'll be able to catch a catch a game on a on a regular basis if necessary thank you thanks Tim next question comes from Mike Puma Brody, is it possible that this PCL laxity is, is something uh, that was missed uh, when Lowry was signed? Well, I think the PCL laxity is something that we've known, you know, has has been part of the root of his problem here for for several months. Um, as far as missed when he when he signed, you know, I don't uh, I don't believe that's that's the case. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mike. Next question comes from Tim Britton. Hey, Brody. Uh, I'm wondering with everything going on with the Marlins and, and kind of the cascade reaction down with the, the schedule within your division, uh, is there, have you guys first heard about anything, any changes to your schedule or, or 
anything going on in the, the future with, with games against the Marlins and Phillies coming up for you? At this point, we, we have not had any scheduled discussions. And, you know, from, from our focus, as, as I think you've heard from Louie and myself in the past, you know, we really are focused on the individual, individual game tonight. And we've, we've learned already this, uh, this short season that things can happen and change very quickly. But right now, we are, uh, we're prepared to go to Atlanta and don't have any, any forecasted changes to our schedule at this point. And then looking ahead to that trip to Atlanta, obviously it's a, you know, you're, you're flying instead of busing like you did to Boston. Or do you have to remind guys more so of, of the protocols? Are you changing the protocols to make them any more strict in light of what, what happened to Miami with their trip to, my, to, to Atlanta? The conversation never ends. So to your point, Tim, you know, reminding and reminders are constant. The, that goes from, from my chair to the coaching staff to the performance staff and even the players to one another. You know, they are mindful of what's going on around them. I think, as I've said before, you know, we, we have regular communication and we've got a commitment to each other to do the best that we can to try to keep, uh, keep each other healthy and keep each other safe so that we can be uh, you know, competitive for, for the field or on the field and then also you know, uh, you know, careful for our families when we go home. And, and for you, do you, is it okay that there might be teams that you're competing with that don't play a full 60 game schedule? What, what is your idea about, you know, teams maybe not being able to fulfill the full 60 games on the schedule? I haven't even thought about it. You know, truthfully, Tim, it's not something that's crossed our mind. You know, our, our goal is to win as many games in the 60 games that we play and, and not, not get distracted from that goal. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Next question comes from Justin Toscano. Hey, Brody, with uh, 10% of the season over, are you pleased with the team start? Say again? I c couldn't hear you through the master, Justin. Are Sorry. You, yeah. Um, are you pleased with the team start with 10% uh, of the season already over? Well, we'd like to be 6-0. and <laughs> So I think our, our goal is to win every game. But, uh, you know, I think we've started to see some, some positive – positive signs with some of the bats and uh you know last night we couldn't couldn't uh couldn't cross uh cross the the finish line on some of those some of those opportunities with guys on base but uh, you know look we're still confident in this team and you know we'll uh we'll keep pursuing our our primary goal which is to win the division and we haven't seen anything in these first six games that that deters us from that uh from that goal and you've said uh, in general that you guys have obviously looked to add major league quality depth. So Brian Dozier, what specifically drew you guys to him? Well, obviously he's he's got pedigree. You know, having been you know an All Star, a Gold Glove winner, uh, a World Champion last year, the, this guy's always been able to hit, particularly against left-handed pitching. So when we looked at the balance of our of our infielders with a lot of a lot of left-handed hitters, we felt like Brian gave us a real threat uh, from the right side of the plate. And, you know, a perfect example tonight, left-handed pitcher starting. So Brian's, Brian's in the lineup right away. But that was the primary focus is a guy who's been there, a guy who's been done that. You know, as recently as last year, he helped a team win a World Series while, while hitting 20 home runs. So that, uh, that's the role. And we, uh, we think that he's capable of being an everyday player, but, uh, but supplements the team that we have right now uh, really well. Thank you. Next question is from Andy Martino. Brody, now that you've had the chance to see Louie uh, manage some regular season major league games, anything jump out at you or surprise you or otherwise to tell you uh, something you might not have known about what kind of in-game manager he's going to be in the yeah. big leagues? Yeah, I, I think we knew Louie pretty well, so I don't know that there's, there's a lot of surprises from our end, but I think what, what he's shown the ability to do already is utilize his whole roster and in particular his communication with – with the players prior to making some of the moves that he's made has been important. And he talked about, you know, the, the importance of humility for the players. He, he mentioned that to the players in his first meeting with them right before the season started. And I think players have bought into the fact that you know, there's going to be days off for, for everybody. There's going to be days off for good players and there's going to be moves late in game that are going to put us in the best position to, to win that particular night, whether that's defensive replacements or whether that's pinch hitting scenarios based on matchups. He's shown a willingness to do that literally every game we've played so far. You know Robbie Cano obviously really well. The idea of uh, taking him out for defense, as you just mentioned, it. has that been something that um, has required any conversations by you to make sure he's on board with that, or has Louis totally handled that and, and handled it well? Louis totally handled that. You know that that's something. The relationship that those two have is is very close and it's very candid. So that's something that Louis's been able to uh, to handle completely on his own, and I think there's respect by both sides. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. 
Next question comes from Disha Tozar. Hey Brody, um, how serious or concerning is Marisnik's injury and what went into the decision to um, bring up Ryan Cordell over someone like Juan Lagares? Yeah, so, so Jake has, has been limited from being at 100% with his hamstring for about 10 days, two weeks now. The goal was to try to build him up with greater innings each day that's gone by. So you've seen him come into the games late, but from his evaluation as well as ours, he was able to get to top speed, but he wasn't able to maintain that top speed the way in which he, which he had hoped. And so uh, rather than continuing on that program with either risking a setback or putting him in a situation where he's not able to be the best version of himself for the long portion of the season. We felt like it was a, a prudent decision to put him on the IL, allow him to get this thing right, and then hopefully within the 10-day you know, the day timeline, he'll be back to being 100% to where he's able to start games and be the difference maker defensively is what we would hoped he would be. You know, the second part of the question as it relates to Ligaris, uh, Juan was another one of these depth pieces that was important to us to make sure we have in our pool of players that we have confidence in that can do this at the major league level. Um, Juan did not have the benefit of summer camp either, so we felt like him getting a few extra days and a few extra at-bats in Brooklyn was going to put him in a better situation to be prepared if and when we need him. Next question comes from Laura Albanese. Uh, just going back to Judd Lowry for a second, uh, you know, he hasn't been in the game in so long. Even if the doctors do find some sort of non-surgical solution to his problem, how realistic do you really think it is that he'll be major league ready with such a shortened season? Well, what we saw in summer camp, even with the layoff, is that he was major league ready offensively from both the left side of the plate and the right side of the plate. He had as professional and as, as many quality at bats as any of the players we had in, had in camp. So we were, we were very pleased to see that. The challenge will be, can we get him to a point where he can run the bases and play defense at the, at the speed and, and at the efficiency level that needs to happen to be a major league player? So those are the two challenges. But if we can get to that point, I don't think it'll take long for him to get ready because of the, the offensive capability. Thanks. Thanks, Laura. Next question comes from Mike Puma. Brody, just uh, where is Stroman at in his rehab? Is, is it possible we could be seeing him pretty soon? Timeline still t to be determined, Mike, but he will be facing, uh, facing hitters tomorrow. Which is, uh, which is encouraging. You know, I, I think as Louis has said, he's been able to continue his throwing program, and tomorrow he'll take the next step of facing, facing hitters, and then we'll, uh, we'll see how he responds from that. One other guy uh, I haven't heard too much about, what's going on with Walker Lockett? Walker, same, uh, same situation as, as uh, some of the other guys down in, in Brooklyn. He's pitching in games, building up his pitch count. You know, I think that right now it's a matter of getting him stretched out to the point where he can be that multi-inning guy that, that is, his, is his specialty. And uh, so he's, he's been throwing, and he actually threw yesterday, felt good. Now it's just making sure we can get over that hump from a fatigue standpoint and in command of his pitches from not having been in, a, in summer camp games. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Next question comes from Wayne Randazzo. Brody, the, um, with the way Peterson and Jimenez have looked here so far, you know, can they play their way into more serious innings or more serious starts down the stretch and kind of push the envelope a little bit that way? You know, going back to what, uh, what I said earlier to Andy's question about uh, Louis's decision-making, you know, Louis managed this team utilizing all these pieces on the roster. And I think as you saw yesterday, when Rosario gets a day off, Louis has a tremendous amount of confidence to start Andres in games, and he rewarded, rewarded us with that decision. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of belief in the talent of that player, so I, I continue to see opportunities for him as we go forward at all three infield positions, not just at, not just at shortstop. Uh, David Peterson stepped up and, and gave us a, a, a crucial start at a time where we really needed a, a big a big outing from him. So we were encouraged with that. We know there's going to be ups and downs for any young player. 
and we will, uh, you know, we'll look forward to these guys continuing to make real contributions and in what form and how frequently, you know, it's going to depend on the health and the ability level of, uh, of our other guys. But uh, both young players, we already knew that they were going to have big league impact. It's happened sooner now maybe than we would have expected based on, uh, you know, the circumstances we found ourselves in with a short season and an expanded roster. But we're, uh, we're excited about what they can do. Next question comes from Tim Healy. Just to run back to Jed Lowry, what is your understanding of what PCL laxity means? Wow, uh, PCL laxity. Well, PCL is a is a ligament in the knee. Sure. Laxity is flexibility um, or looseness in that in that ligament. So um, that's where stabilizing that is important. Building strength around it. Um, you know, should allow him to be able to, uh, you know, to perform. And so that's the key, and it's been the key, is strengthening that area. And again, he's been able to feel close to, if not 100%, while wearing, you know, the, the larger brace. The challenge is getting it that same strength and stabilization when he's, when he's transitioning to the other braces. So that, uh, for my, you know, medical expertise, Tim, you know, it's, uh, it's looseness of, uh, of the knee. Okay, thank you. And then with Stroman, Luis has indicated that, it's not so much pitching and arm strength as it is waiting for the calf to heal so that he can run at full speed, play his position, and that will be determined by an eventual second MRI. Is that correct? I'm not, I'm not sure about a follow-up follow up MRI or not, but okay. to, to, the, to the first part of that question, uh, no doubt. I mean, Marcus is an explosive athlete. He plays with high, high energy, and to, to give him the freedom to be the player that he – the only way he knows how to play is full is full throttle. Um, we need to make sure that when he does show that burst, that we're not risking re-injury that would keep him out for a longer period of time. So so far so good. The rehab has gone well, and and again each each day that he's able to continue forward, we'll have a better understanding of what of what his timeline is. But so far, being able to keep his arm care going and being able to go on with his with uh, pitch counts and and his throwing program, you know, gives us more confidence that we can shorten up the timeline for the calf. And is, does he have to do any sort of running or defensive progression as part of his rehab before he comes back? Well, I think all that's wrapped into it. You know, agility work. He's doing a lot of things in the training room as well as being outside. Uh, so, yes, I mean, he's going to have to train and put himself in a position where he feels confident and the training staff feels confident that he can play the game at full, full speed. He's a ground ball pitcher. So he's going to need to make sure he can get off the mound and cover first base. All the things that are programmed into his into his mind on a on a daily basis, anyway. Thank you. Yep. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey Brody, uh, just back to Jed Lowry real quick again. You know, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, but when you go back to the thought process behind signing the deal a couple of off seasons ago, to what extent, if at all, do you second guess that move? Well, we're seeing now, and, and we saw it last year as well, the importance of versatility. And Jed being a switch hitter that could play all three infield positions was a strategic move to give us depth and versatility in the infield. Uh, it was important then, it's important now, and it's been disappointing to him and, and obviously disappointing and frustrating for everyone involved that we haven't been able to, to see, him, see him perform in that role. Also, just on a different topic, you know, you've had to DFA a few pitchers in the in about the past week, I think. Uh, any concern just uh, of what that could potentially do down the line to your pitching depth? Obviously, this is a strange season, and pitching is in need across the league. It look the the challenges that that we're faced with right now is that 30 players are on the active roster, and there's only 40 available players on the roster. You get a couple extra spots when you have people on the 45 day or et cetera. But when players come back off that, you've got to lose roster spots. So anytime you have to add players at the expense of players who are on your roster, it's a challenge. And I think that's something that all of us across the league are facing right now. And you can't have enough depth at any particular position, whether it's starters, relievers, catchers to the point of Bruce Maxwell, Brian Dozier, Juan Lagares. These are all examples of trying to continue to bring in bring in pieces. You know, Hunter Strickland was brought in, Jared Hughes was brought in specifically to give us, you know, more names and more more proven guys to be able to step up. 
you know, Hunter was able to do it. You know, he made our team out of camp where, uh, you know, it's never, never easy to lose a player like him. It's never easy to lose a, a younger player that we think has potential, you know, in years down the road. But, you know, roster management is always a challenge. I think it's, it's an even greater challenge when there's only 60 players that are allowed to be in the pool and we don't really have a minor league, full minor league system from which to draw from. Thank you. Next question comes from Disha Dozar. Hey, Brody, how much have um, the team's defensive issues hurt, hurt the team so far this season? We, we have to play an all-around game to, to be the team that we want to be. And, you know, there have been points in the, in the season so far where, you know, our offense was in position to break through and we weren't necessarily able to do it. When we were up in Boston, we, we had some big timely hits, two out hits, home runs with runners on, runners on base. You know, at points in time, we've, we've pitched well, and at points in time, we've made the plays that we needed to play. You know, I think we're always going to be looking at our, at our club to try to have balance. You know, that's why someone like Andres Jimenez is on the team. It's the reason why Jake Marisnik was, was brought in to be on the team. And it's the reason why Ryan Cordell was, was called up to replace him. You know, we want to be able to mix and match and be more defensive on one night and more offensive on the other night. And, you know, the, the injury to Jake Marisnik impacted us pretty, pretty significantly and Louis' ability to, to utilize those guys. But we have confidence that we'll be able to catch the ball and, uh, and give us the balance to, to score the runs that we want to score. Given just the shortness of this season, do you plan to um, implement any drills or anything you can do to, um, you know, kind of fix some of those defensive issues? Our players are working hard. Our coaches are working hard. And we've, uh, we've got confidence in the guys that we can run out there to give us a chance to win each night. Brody, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good luck in Atlanta. Members of the media, the link that was sent out for Louis Rojas will be the link you use.